however the truck moves underneath it. So there guys, it's turning around, or at least to us it's turning around, but it's not turning around, it's the, it's the truck that's turning around. And uh, so we're able to detect our motion relative to that. So in other words, it wants to stay exactly where it is, doing what it is, in space. And we are now moving around it, but it stays where it is. And by being able to measure the difference in movement between the gyroscope and truck or ship, we can compensate for that movement. 25,000 years ago, the gyroscopic effect was used, unknowingly, in early boomerangs. But today, gyroscopes have many applications. And here, on this battle-ready aircraft carrier, the gyroscopic effect is put to a very specific use in keeping the whole ship stable so that aircraft can operate from the flight deck in pretty much any sea conditions. This is the ship's gyroscope room. In here, apparently, there are two different gyroscopes. Simon, I can't find them. Am I standing next yep. to one? Yep. First right. one here, uh, Naval Compass System, has two separate spinning gyros in it, like the ones you've seen. One in this plane, one in the horizontal plane. Um, spinning at 11,800 RPM. As the ship moves around, obviously they're staying stable and we're using electrical system to measure off the degree of pitch roll and ship's heading. The gyros on Illustrious spin almost eight times faster than the one I built. The faster a gyroscope spins, the stronger the gyroscopic effect and the more stable it is, so the measurements taken from it are very accurate. As the ship pitches and rolls, this information is fed directly to the stabilizers and they adjust accordingly to maintain a smooth trim through the water and keep the flight deck level. So thanks to an ancient hunting boomerang, an aircraft carrier today can keep its flight deck level, ready for its aircraft to take off at just a moment's notice. But how do you launch a squadron of jets in just a few minutes? Illustrious is a potent force with a powerful punch. In a war zone, the flight deck is a buzz of activity as jets and helicopters are readied for action. But not all the aircraft can be kept on the flight deck ready to roll. Some are stored in the hangar below and need to be moved up to the flight deck as quickly as possible. And that's where these come in. Two massive aircraft lifts. One here at the back, the other up at the front. Each lift weighs 70 tonnes and it can move the three levels between the hangar and the flight deck in just 36 seconds. And that speed is important because, well, when you're fighting a war, you want to get your aeroplanes up here to the flight deck and in the air as quick as possible. And that's where traditional engineering struggle. The aircraft lifts are hydraulic. Most hydraulic systems on their own are powerful but slow. And although they could lift the aircraft, it would take far too long. These devices provided a solution. They're called accumulators. And, well, they don't look like much, but they can greatly increase the pressure in a hydraulic system, and that can speed things up. So it's thanks to these that that lift can get on with its job, and it can do it quickly. A 19th century engineer, William George Armstrong, invented them. More famous for manufacturing guns, he was also into dockside hydraulic cranes. These were powered by water, but mains pressure at the time was low and often unreliable. So Armstrong devised an entirely new way of creating high pressure within a hydraulic system. And Armstrong's device, the accumulator, was used to its biggest effect on one of London's most famous landmarks, the Tower Bridge. At the height of Britain's industrial power, London faced a problem. The Thames docks were home to large commercial shipping, which needed access upriver, but the growing population needed bridges. The solution was a bridge with two lifting roadways, or bascules. People and traffic could cross, but when shipping needed to get through, the bascules could be raised. At first glance, the bridge really isn't much like an aircraft carrier at all but they both had to lift heavy weights. Each of the carrier's lifts can raise 85 tonnes. 
Each of those two road sections, bascules, weighs 1,200 tons. And speed was important too, because when the bridge was first opened in 1894, it was raised over 6,000 times in that first year. That's once every 20 minutes in its operational hours. And it's the accumulator that provided the hydraulic pressure to do this. At the time, they were amongst the biggest accumulators that Armstrong had built. But today, the bridge is all electric. I'm down in the depths of one of the towers. That's the bascule up above with the road going across. And from time to time, you can hear the thump of the traffic crossing overhead. When the bridge is raised, that pivoted counterweight, everything you can see painted white up there, swings down through this cavernous chamber. Probably best if I don't hang around too long here. And this is one of the old accumulators still down here in the base of Tower Bridge. I say one of them because there were originally six as part of the hydraulic system. As you can see, they are quite large. Each one weighed 100 tons and had to be able to move up and down within the chamber. That's some serious Victorian engineering. They did love a big bolt and a rivet, didn't they? Serious Victorian engineering they may be, but they still have modern applications, and there are contemporary engineers who know how to make and use them, people like Geraint Owen. Right, it's time finally to get to grips with accumulators and find out just how they work. Geraint, you've built one. Well, you say you've built one. This is... It's just some pipes and a foot pump. What it is largely some pipes and foot pump. We've got you a bit of a mock-up of uh, your tower bridge. And okay. You've got a little stirrup pump and a bucket of water. Okay. Just to give you an idea um, of you pumping up the bridge, because you're doing all the hard work, um, as imagining there's a boat coming. So if you get pumping, we can see the bridge opening. So this is the bridge. Yeah. Ship's coming along, and this is just with a pump to open the bridge. Yeah. Right. That's working. Uh, I'm pumping the bridge up. There goes tower, tower bridge. And eventually your hard work is leading to the, uh, to the bridge being open. Yeah. So simple hydraulics, you've got a pump, you've got a ram, up, up it opens. Yeah. So Oops. what difference does an accumulator make? The trouble is that you've been doing that um, sort of in real time um, and it can only open as fast as you can pump. Yes. Whereas if we, instead of opening the bridge, we get you to, open, uh, to put the energy into an accumulator, which we've got an accumulator here, so if you get pumping again, we can use the same amount of energy and put it into this accumulator. So you pump away merrily. Here we've got some weights onto a, onto a hydraulic ram that's keeping the water under pressure. That's probably enough. So that's now there. It can stay there. The energy is being stored. Anytime we want, we can now open the valve and uh, open the bridge. So okay. here comes your boat. Open the valve. And just in one smooth stroke, the thing's open. Same it's amount of energy. But it's, it's stored in there. It literally does accumulate energy then and exactly keeps it that. for when you need it. Exactly that. So it's just kind of a battery for hydraulics to store some energy. So an accumulator stores energy, ready to be released the moment it's needed. The more accumulators a system has, the more energy it can store and the faster it can work. On Illustrious, each lift has four accumulators. They can boost the pressure of the whole hydraulic system up to 172 bar. And if you consider that your average car tyre is at just over 2 bar, you get a sense of the energy stored in it. And the accumulators themselves are a fraction the size of the original ones, which is probably just as well, because there wouldn't be much room for aircraft in here if you had to fit those huge towers in. A model of the bridge may demonstrate the principle of accumulator power, but I've devised a test that'll take things a little further. Well, a lot further. I'm going to find out how quickly I can move a car along an inclined trailer using just a 62 horsepower engine driving a hydraulic pump. I'm then going to use the same engine and pump to charge an accumulator. And then let's see what happens when I release the energy from that. So, I'll need a bank of accumulators. So there are half a dozen of these which are the sort of modern design of nitrogen-filled accumulator. Where before we had a, a, basically a ram with some weights on the top which yeah. followed your tower bridge model, this is how hydraulic accumulators are now done. 
Modern accumulators contain a bladder, like a heavy-duty balloon, which is filled with high-pressure gas. As hydraulic 